Hi, YouTubers. Jeff Cote here from Pacific Yacht Systems. We've got a question from Donald on welding cable. Jeff, I've been watching a lot of your YouTube videos, and I noticed that you mentioned many times not using welding cables for main battery cables. Everything I've learned is that they flow more power and less resistance. Can you please ex explain that? I don't see how this is a problem if the cables are properly made with soldered and heat shrink ends. Donald. Well, Donald, um, let's go through, let's think about a little bit about what are the implications of going with welding wire. First of all, welding wire is not color coordinated. They only comes in black. So you're gonna be wiring basically all your main distribution with black wiring. And uh, that's gonna be confusing later down the road if you have other technicians or other boat owners. And they're gonna try to figure out, well, what are all these black wires doing? Which one is positive, which one is negative? And then people are, might have to rely on the heat shrink. And so I'm not a big fan of using black for everything. I like to make things easy, simple, and I think it's important to have color coordinated cables. But let's assume that you can overlook that and for you, colors are not that important on your boat and you're gonna find a way to solve that problem. The next issue is actually the insulation. The jacket of a welding cable is over time uh, gonna become brittle. And I was on a boat last week. Uh, the boat is probably from 1990s. And the welding cable that is connected from the starters to the engine batteries actually is cracked everywhere. I was showing the owner, the show owner was absolutely shocked, and it was almost like this, or an orange peel. Literally, have it, you could see the bare wires underneath uh, the insulation. So that's one reason why you shouldn't do welding cables, is that the jacket of a welding cable is actually gonna become brittle over time. And the other thing too that's even scarier is that if ever that cable actually gets exposed to, like for example, oil or fuel, you're actually gonna notice, and this is the scary part, and this is really scary, the jacket, the insulation can actually dissolve. And I've seen it on boats where actually there was a diesel leak and the welding cable that uh, basically was touched by diesel, the insulation actually melted. So that's now two good reasons. The other thing too is that welding cable in a lot of instances uh, doesn't flex as well as some of the marine cabling. And also remember, these connections are untinned, right? So you're thinking about all these reasons, and I know the cost is higher, but think about a welder. A welder doesn't buy a welding cable and says to their partner, you know, I'm so glad I bought this cable. It's gonna last me the next 40 years. It's a wear and tear item. They might use that cable for a year or two years, and then they're gonna move on and buy another one. But as a boater, whatever we do on a boat, it's not a one year, five year, 10 year horizon. We're talking about 20, 30, 40 years. So if you're gonna do something on your boat, my suggestion is do it right at the beginning and so that you never have to retrace your steps and do it again. Because as we know, as boaters, the list of things to do never ever ends. And hence why we never do anything with welding cable and more often than not, we're actually removing it and replacing it with marine grade cable. So that's a really good question, Donald. Hopefully that explains that. Thanks for watching everyone. And if you've got further questions, please send them our way. Thank you.